Uh, let's bring in right now David Gartenstein Ross. He's the senior fellow with the Fo Foundation for Defense of Democracies, and Tom Fuentes. He's CNN's law enforcement analyst and former assistant director for the FBI. Gentlemen, uh, nice to see you this morning, though we have to talk about this horrible video. David, I want to start with you. There are some notable differences. Joe laid out some of them between this video and others that ISIS have put out. What do you see when you watch this? I think the first major difference is that you don't see the beheading on camera. One reason for this may be that Kassig did something to disrupt the, cinemata uh, the cinematic setting that ISIS wanted to uh, ob obtain. Uh, they subjected James Foley to mock beheadings prior to his execution, in part because you only have one take to get the beheading right. And in this case, Kassig may have disrupted the take, which is why they don't actually show the beheading on camera. And Tom, uh, you also don't see uh, Kassig making any statement. We had seen those coerced statements before from the hostages. Not in this one. It is possible that Peter Kassig did something or refused to make a statement or said something that went off script from what ISIS wanted. How do you, what do you make of it? No, that's true, Allison. That could be that he was not as docile and cooperative as they would have liked. Also, he might have made statements that I've converted to, be, to Islam. I'm an aid worker. I'm helping, which is the very thing they don't want. They don't want Westerners coming in there and, and doing good things. They want to portray all Westerners as uh, deserving of death and uh, horrific death at that. Uh, David, this one also, I believe, gives a locator. It somehow is printed or stamped with a town in Syria. That's different, and that seems as though, why would ISIS play its hand that way? Uh, Dabek Syria is uh, what they named their online English language magazine after. It's called Dabek as well. Uh, this comes from uh, Islamic prophecy related to the end times. What uh, ISIS has portrayed themselves as from the very outset is something that's fulfilling prophecy, uh, coming and restoring the glory of Islam as they understand it. Uh, and um, uh, that's why they declared the caliphate. I mean, one of their uh, major rationales is that they fulfill the requirements to uh, bring back and unify the ummah or worldwide body of believers. Tom, is there anything in this video that would help investigators find this person? Well, if you see the whole video, uh, there might be. And, and it appears that they, they uh, were more of a hurry, I guess, when they executed him and did the killing. So it could indicate they may have a worry about being outside in the open air too long, doing too much with all of their people in black robes uh, because of fear of being spotted by American aircraft or Syrian aircraft or a drone or or other things. So uh, it is possible that they're a little bit worried about the, the, the possibility of being found as, as to their location. Uh, David, CNN has made a decision only to use those two still pictures that we are showing from the video, not to show uh, any of the video because it is so disgusting and so barbaric. And there's always a debate in the media, David, about whether or not talking about these videos is important to inform viewers about how barbaric ISIS is or whether or not it plays into ISIS's hands because it helps them disseminate their vile propaganda. Where do you fall on that? I think that's an important debate, and I think that there are strong arguments on both sides. Uh, what they all say is that this is an extraordinarily bar barbaric group. Its barbarity at some point is going to come back to hurt it, the way that uh, its predecessor, al-Qaeda in Iraq, uh, engaged in such excesses uh, that it ended up provoking a major backlash against it. Uh, ISIS has already killed uh, over 10,000 people, uh, and uh, that's probably a, a very conservative estimate. One thing I'd say uh, that's worth contextualizing is not just the video itself, but also the fact that the video comes in the context of a lot of setbacks for ISIS. It's gained no new ground since, Oct since October the 14th. It's lost ground, such as the Beji oil refinery. Its campaign has really stalled out. It hasn't even been able to take Kobani, which was protected um, you know, ver not very well when ISIS uh, made an advance. It's gone from being a symbol of ISIS being unstoppable to being a symbol of how ISIS really has been stopped. That's excellent context, and it's so important to keep uh, repeating those sorts of things. Tom, how do you think the media should handle it when ISIS puts out another one of these videos? Well, the problem, Allison, is that, yes, it does help ISIS. It helps their recruiting and their propaganda and, you know, their efforts to uh, appear invincible. On the other hand, we have serious policy discussions that need to occur in this country and with the uh, alleged allies uh, to determine what extent do we have to go to to eliminate them? How bad are they? And if we don't know how bad they are or if people aren't informed that this is what they do and, and this is what's happening in that region, then how are we going to make an informed decision about future troop deployments or airstrike deployments or 
other uh, actions in the region. Well, you're right. That is exactly the debate that goes on inside the media and obviously with policymakers as well. David Gartenstein-Ross and Tom Fuentes, thanks so much for talking about this this morning.